Good evening and thanks for joining us on Nationwide today. I am Elizabeth Omori. President Mohamed Buhari has promised Nigeria support for the Africa Adaptation Acceleration Program developed to scale up financing for climate change adaptation in Africa. The President was speaking at the Virtual Leaders Dialogue on the Africa COVID Climate Emergency by the African Development Bank and the Global Center for Adaptation on Engay Fine Face reports. Although Africa contributes only 3% to global carbon emission, it is the most hit by the effects of climate change, which costs the continent $15 billion every year. It could rise to $40 billion by 2040. President Muhammad Buhari, represented by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Jeffrey Uyama, wants the African Adaptation Acceleration Program to further boost Nigeria's adaptation priority. Being one of the most vulnerable nations, Nigeria will not hesitate to leverage on this program to forestall the exacerbating impact of climate change. Africa is one of the most vulnerable continents to climate change and climate vulnerability, a situation that unfortunately has been aggravated by the COVID-19 pandemic. We cannot wait until the silent crisis reaches pandemic levels before we act. We have to act now and do so with gusto. For failure to act now will be catastrophic. On its part, the African Development Bank, convener of the Virtual Leaders Dialogue on Africa COVID Climate Emergency, is already making progress on climate adaptation financing, but insists that developed countries must fulfill promises made to developing nations. It is time for developed countries to meet their promise of providing $100 billion annually for climate finance. And a greater share of this should go to climate adaptation. I ask that by COP26, we have concrete proposals on the table to make access to climate finance easier and faster, including for African nations. Support for climate adaptation in Africa is crucial. Investment and trade in key environmental goods and services can make climate adaptation much more affordable for Africa. The Leaders' Dialogue received Commitments from several African heads of government, the International Monetary Fund, the Africa Union, World Trade Organization, United States of America, among others. On Nguye Fine Face, NT News. In talking security now, Vice President Yemi Oshimbaju this Wednesday decorated the acting Inspector General of Police, Usman Akali Baba, supported by the Minister of Police Affairs, Maigari Dingyadi, Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Bos Mustafa, and other top officers of the police at a brief ceremony held at the Presidential Villa in Abuja. The Vice President urged the acting Inspector General of Police to put up his best to salvage and protect the dignity of the Nigerian police force. The task is huge, the pre Vice President says, promising the support of the administration towards a crime-free society. Vice President Yemi Oshimbaju also reminded the acting IGP on the need to diligently implement the community policing program already been executed by his predecessor. The police must now rebuild in some ways also the broken bridges of trust with the public and regain the confidence of the citizenry. This is an ongoing challenge, is an ongoing task that the police force and all of the senior members of the police force must take on as a responsibility, that of a continual process of building trust with the Nigerian public. One of the ways it can do this is by implementing the community policing policy, which had already taken off, and reconceptualizing policing as a task carried out in partnership with local communities and by officers who are members of these localities. Under your leadership, the force must live up to all of the high standards of professional conduct and compliance with the rule of law. It must significantly improve the welfare and working conditions of its officers while rapidly scaling up its forensic, logistical, logistical and operational capacities to meet today's challenges. You must stamp out the excesses and abuses and the culture of impunity demonstrated by some elements of the force which provoke public outrage against the institution. 
Vice President Yemi Oshimbadio thanks the former Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, for a job well done, stressing that the Nigerian people will forever remember his great contributions towards the improvement of the Niger police force. Meanwhile, immediate past Inspector General of Police Mohamed Adamu transfers symbol of authority to new IGP Usman Al Khalid Baba. He becomes the 21st Indigenous Inspector General of the Niger Police Force. Details of this report will come in our subsequent bulletin. Into other matters, Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo has applauded the roads rehabilitation project by the Imo State Government, describing it as being in sync with the federal government's policy on achieving safer roads. He made this known at the inauguration of the newly rehabilitated Dick Tiger Road in Oweri. Right, Ibucho has details. Amen. The three kilometer Dick Tiger Road covers over 10 streets and had been in a very deplorable state for close to 20 years. The road therefore attracted the attention of the Imo State government in view of its economic importance. Vice President Jimmy Oshibajo, while inaugurating the road, lauded Governor Hobos Odima for his determination in repositioning Imo State, noting that there can be no meaningful economic growth without infrastructural development. Anyone who perpetrates violence does not represent the progressive mindedness of the good people of this state and this region. And I call on all of us to come together to resist any attempts to turn progress and peace at this zone set to experience to conflict and disruption. Governor Hopus Odima restates that the vision of his administration is to ensure easy movement of goods and services across the 27 local government areas of the state as it will boost commercial activities and real estate. We become the touch bearer of the party, spreading the gospel of development with our standing performance as a standard bearer by 2023 when there will be another opportunity for the people to choose a party of their choice, I have no doubt in my mind that the entire people of Southeast will gladly embrace it. The Dick Tiger Road is one out of the others being constructed across the 27 local government areas of Imo State in Owerre. Bright, Ibuchi, NTA News. Nigeria has demonstrated more readiness to further deepen multilateral cooperation with the D8 member nations to achieve a development aspiration. This was at the 19th meeting of the D8 Organization for Economic Cooperation held online. Minister of Foreign Affairs Jeffrey Oyama, who reiterated Nigeria's commitment in the organization, urged member nations to fully utilize the technology transfer and exchange network platform to promote sustainable development. is another progressive uh, initiative that would undoubtedly assist member states' uh, quest to achieve the um, sustainable development goals of ending hunger, achieving food security, uh, improving nutrition, and promoting uh, sustainable um, uh, agriculture. The minister presented Ambassador Isiaka Abdukari Imam as Nigeria's nominee for the post of the Secretary General of the organization. D8 is an organization for development cooperation for Bangladesh, Egypt, Indonesia, Iran, Malaysia, Nigeria, Pakistan, and Turkey. The objectives of the D8 organization for economic cooperation are to improve member states' position in the global economy, diversify, and create new opportunities. In its fight to tackle security challenges, the Cross River State Police Command has paraded 35 suspected criminals arrested for committing various crimes ranging from armed robbery, kidnapping, sexual assault and vandalism. Udwak Aitim reports that the Commissioner of Police, Cross River State, reiterated the commitment of the force to rid the state of criminal elements. For alleged sexual assault, he is said to be arrested in a hotel in Calabar after he lured one female student to a hotel room and attempted to use sex toys on her. 
a total of 35 suspects were paraded at the Cross River State Police Command for committing various crimes such as kidnapping, cultism, rape, stealing and receiving of stolen property belonging to the government primary school at two, as well as armed robbery suspects who have been terrorizing Ikore Fanga eight miles and its environs. Several items recovered from the suspects which were displayed at the Cross River State Police Command include locally made pistols, charms, phones, ATM cards and others. We continue to be resolute, we continue to be determined, we continue to work very hard for the peace and progress of Cross River State. Some suspects speak. And the Hilos, they wrote uh, anti court with their officers in, uh, is in a uh, cultural center. So I did not have uh, anything with so They just came and some some of the people, was, even me, I was afraid. I said, what happened? They picked me up. I said, the people now kill our, our patients, our youth. So that's when the problem starts. The Cross River State Police Command says, it will continue to respond to the plight of the people of the state and urge the public to embrace the strategy of police-private partnership approach through intelligence gathering and sharing, devoid of fear of molestation or betrayal. In Calabar, Uduak Etam, NTA News. An ongoing industrial action embarked upon by the organized labor in Taraba State has entered second week. Adamo Harana Adams reports that so far an end is not in sight. The strike, which has lasted for more than a week, grounded almost every official government transaction in the state. We want everywhere to be closest. We don't want anybody to, to operate. Still, I'm calling them to remain at home, as I will tell them, on chair. The government call us, we see with them, after our discussion with them before they hear what we tell them again. I am appealing to the labor leaders to please suspend the strike they have embarked upon. I want to assure you that the government is not insensitive to your demands. However, hospitals, schools, water supply and other services are all shut down across the state. The situation regarding healthcare services is worsened by the ongoing national strike by Association of Resident Doctors. NTN News visit to the Federal Medical Center, Janingo, reveals that only skeletal services are being rendered. They are asking that the federal government should try and sort out the NRD issues. We are also asking for His Excellency, the Governor, to wade into the issues of NLC so that also the other peripheral facilities and secondary health care facilities will come on board so that we can be able to take care of the health needs of Tarabas. The bond of contention between the organized labor and the Taraba state government is implementation of the new national minimum wage. In Jalingo, Adam Haruna Adams, NTA News. Following the strike action embarked upon by the National Association of Resident Doctors, the federal government has stated that while the process of implementation of policies may have been hampered by a few bottlenecks, it remains committed and resolute in meeting the demands of Nigerian health workers. These were the high points of discussions by guests on Good Morning Nigeria. Daniel Adiri tells us more. for legitimate demands, pay the house officers their remunerations, pay the um, members on gift mix their remunerations, give us a better hazard allowance. Those are one of the few things we are asking for. We have moved from our own end to the labor end because a kind of dispute, you know, has been declared. Yes. yes, some of the demands of, uh, of these uh, you know, younger colleagues, they are legitimate. We are, not, we are not disputing that. But we are saying that the way we go about meeting these demands, we need a lot of patience in the system and a, a lot of understanding. Government paid 32 billion for three months. 32 billion. Dr. Mamona will tell you, what was in the COVID budget? For it was 20 billion. We started paying 
and we couldn't go around. And I had to make a special case. Fought in the economy sustainability committee because there is no money. And Minister of Finance had to go outside the COVID budget of 500 to get another 12 billion for the payment. While the ongoing strike and backed upon by resident doctors lingers on, government has again reiterated its stand in ensuring full implementation of the Memorandum of Actions for Health Workers. However, stakeholders in the health sector believe issues ranging from discrepancies in agreement to slow implementation of agreed policies be duly deliberated and mutually agreed upon. Enemy wants to strike cut off, but what enemy is saying and what not is saying is that government should put the act together and do the needful. Acknowledging the efforts of government thus far in provision of better welfare packages for healthcare workers, they called for a more efficient and fast-track process of policy implementation. In Abuja, Daniel Adirie, NT News. We do apologize for the order hitch experienced at the beginning of that report. To bear with us. Still on health, 7th of April every year is commemorated globally as World Health Day to mobilize action towards attaining better health for all, leaving no one behind. This is theme is together for a fairer, healthier world. On this occasion, the World Health Organization calls for urgent action to eliminate health inequities. And joining us via Zoom to speak more on the essence of the day is Dr. Kofi Boateng, Cluster Lead, Universal Health Coverage. Dr. Kofi, it's nice to have you join us on Nationwide. Good afternoon to you and uh, I'm happy to be here. Good afternoon to your listeners as well. Thank you so much. Uh, this is theme is focusing on elimination of health inequities. How can this be achieved? How can we eliminate health inequities? Uh, thank you very much. Um, as you know, um, um, the, there are existing gaps in terms of access to healthcare. And uh, you may have noticed that with the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, the disruptions of health services and economies have even revealed more the challenges that we have in terms of inequities in the, in the, in the health sector. Um, WHO, as you know, um, ensures that uh, individuals have access to quality good health because we believe that having a holistic uh, a health status of individuals is very critical. And we, we focus on ensuring that the physical well-being, mental and social well-being of, of individuals are well maximized and optimized for development. So in this regard, uh, this year um, and every year, we have recognized the millions of people who have suffered from terrible diseases and the unfortunate outcomes of deaths that happened uh, globally. Okay. And therefore, this year, we want to look at um, joining hands with countries and member states uh, to build a fairer and healthier world for okay. everyone so okay. that we can get the full benefit of health for All the right, entire Dr. population. Kofi, I would like to come in there. Uh, COVID-19 pandemic has had great, grave consequences on people already experiencing health inequities. What would be the way out for such groups? Uh, thank you very much. Um, I, in, in, you know WHO recommendations around development of strategic preparedness and response plan for COVID-19 uh, has been well accepted and adopted by many countries, including Nigeria. Uh, in Nigeria, we are focusing on three key areas, prevention, treatment, as well as tracking. And in terms of prevention, in addition to the existing um, uh, preventive measures such as the wearing of face masks, ensuring hand washing, ensuring social distancing. The introduction of the COVID-19 vaccine is also an additional tool that we need to maximize to ensure that we can manage the pandemic. Of course, we are not leaving out the requirement for quality treatment of all cases, as well as surveillance for individuals who may be exposed to the infection. All right, considering your position, I would like to ask you what progress has been made so far to tackle health disparity amongst nations? 
Uh, th thank you very much. Th there have been significant progress. Okay. Of course, we cannot ignore the setbacks uh, due to the COVID-19 uh, disruptions. Uh, we have seen countries uh, increasing commitments to health financing and adopting different strategies to ensure that individuals have access to, to quality health care. Um, the major challenge we have had is to try to deep, deep dive onto the parameters that are affecting vulnerable populations that are not reached with quality health services. And uh, if you look at Nigeria, for example, there have been significant efforts in addressing inequities. For example, example in terms of health financing, um, there is currently um, a law in the House of um, uh, Parliament or Assembly the National Assembly to try to address uh, the gaps in the, the health financing architecture, especially with access to health insurance, where they want to make this uh, health insurance mandatory. Uh, in terms of uh, maternal and child health, the WHO is also supporting the country to implement the uh, reproductive and maternal and child health um, a strategy that would ensure that we look at the spectrum of mortalities and morbidities across the life course uh, and to make sure that we save as much lives as possible. And uh, there are several interventions as well to also uh, mitigate the risk of um, outbreak uh, diseases of uh, uh, emergencies or epidemics in the country. All right, Dr. Kofi Boateng, Cluster Head, Universal Health Coverage. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you very much. You're watching Nationwide on ATA. Let's take a break now. And when we return, Kenny will be up for more reports in Lagos. To stay with us. Hello and welcome to Lagos. 30.11 of private candidates who sat for the February-March 2021 West African Senior School Certificate Examinations obtained credits and above in a minimum of five subjects, including English language and mathematics, a decline from 32.23% in November 2020. This was revealed by the head of Nigeria National Office of WIAC in Lagos, Inginu John Adams reports. 2,938 candidates representing 40.31% obtained credit and above in a minimum of any five subjects with or without English language and or mathematics. Head of Nigeria National Office of WIAC, Patrick Aragon, announcing the 2021 first series results for private candidates who sat for the West African Senior School Certificate Examination. He revealed that a total of 7,690 candidates entered for the examination, a 38% decline from 2020, while 7,289 participated in the exercise, attributing the drop to the COVID-19 pandemic. The number of candidates that had five credits, including English language and mathematics, may not necessarily be a basis for judging the level of performance in this examination. This is because the examination is more or less a remedial one. Some candidates may just need only one or two papers. The 2021 examinations, which will unfold in series, is the fourth edition in Nigeria, and so far, 98 0.42% of the candidates have their results fully processed and released, while 1.58% have few of their subjects still being processed due to some errors on the part of the candidates. In Lagos, Hingino John Adams, NTA News. Now the place of gas in Nigeria's energy mix is becoming more secure with the attention the sector currently enjoys from the federal government and other key stakeholders. To further drive the development of the sector, experts say government must focus on implementing policies that remove barriers to investment and promote domestic consumption of gas. Adini Itaiwo completes the report. Nigeria sits atop an estimated 200 trillion cubic feet of proven gas reserve spread across all producing states in the country. It occupies the ninth position in the global ranking, with exports standing at 929,844 cubic feet. 
processing this huge gas deposit into liquefied petroleum gas, liquefied natural gas, and recently compressed natural gas has given the nation a cleaner, cheaper, and readily available energy source for domestic, industrial, and automobile uses, putting domestic consumption at 664,628 cubic feet. Our resolve has been to emplace policies and promote initiatives that support the utilization of our abundant natural gas resources. We are also involved in establishing the storage facility for LPG. Uh, not just in the Niger Delta, but we extend our tentacles up to Kaduna, Kano, and Gombe State. Auto gas policy, national gas expansion program, and construction of Ajakuta Kaduna Kano gas pipeline are some of the initiatives targeted at building gas infrastructure and promoting value addition. If the petroleum industry bill is passed, some of these things will be streamlined and it will encourage uh, people, even the question of pricing we are talking about, the question of infrastructure, the question of taxation, all these things will be clearly uh, streamlined and people will then know what is in need for them. Experts hope that the sector will, in coming days, witness more synergy, particularly between government and the private sector that is needed to drive its expansion. In Lagos, Adenia Taiwo, NTN News. And that's our contribution from Lagos. Elizabeth, it's back to you. Thank you so much, Candy. Threat to the nation's security architecture is promoting advocacy for a comprehensive review and kinetic approach to tackle criminal elements terrorizing parts of the country. Guest on NTS current affairs program, Tuesday Life, are seeking a paradigm shift to nip in the board the trend of violent attacks on national peace and development. Abubakar Usman Akwanga reports. Nigeria's consistent push of returning the country to sustainable paths of peace despite continued battle to crush remnant of insurgents and other outlawed groups is being sabotaged by unconventional forces. The development stakeholders say requires a strategic and kinetic approach to contain the growing threat to national peace and prosperity of the Nigerian state. There is a purpose for this nation. The greatness cannot be underplayed. The state actor can come out with military great weapons to attack a hard, hardened facility like a um, police command or a correctional service. That is a clear attack on the integrity of the state. Criminals live in us, they live within us. They are our kids, they are brothers, they are children. And we need to know who they are because if we sensitize the community, they will give us a lot of intelligence. On the huge investment of government in the gas sector, experts commended the clinical execution of federal government gas projects aimed at stimulating industrial revolution for national development. Gas is the future of this country, and, and there are three key reasons I would say so. It will do for us what crude oil did not do for us. Crude oil delivered revenues to the economy, and therefore, even while it delivered 95% of our revenues, accounted for only 10% of our GDP. But gas is an enabler. Gas will generate electricity that that we then transform this country. Gas is an enabler for industrialization. That this administration has been very intentional about is to increase that utilization from 30% objective today to about 70% in the medium term. Nigeria has become a net exporter of fertilizers because of the gas utilization, because of uh, the gas availability. But the infrastructure and the gas expansion that is required within the domestic economy. That's only when we can get the multiplier effects. Guests say the successful actualization of the decade of gas will further enhance investment growth rate and increase the gross domestic product by 25%, which is far above the crude oil benchmark in Abuja. Abubakar Usman Akwanga, NTA News. The chairman of the Niger Governors Forum and Governor of Ikiti State, Dr. Kaidi Fayemi, has emphasized the need to improve the capacity of the nation's military to enhance security and peace. Governor Fayemi said this while granting audience to the General Officer Commanding 2 Mechanized Division of the Nigerian Army, Major General Gold Chibuisi, at the Government House, Adwe Kola Adebabui reports. 
Governor Fayemi would noted that the role of the military in protecting territorial integrity of the country cannot be underrated, stressed that a lot needs to be done in strengthening the capacity of the military for a peaceful and varied society. He commended efforts of the force in counter-terrorism and assured of his support in ensuring its operations are successful. For us, we will continue to try our best to uh, support the military in to Major General Good Chibuzi noted that the familiarization visit became imperative to strengthen military ties with the state government in achieving peaceful society. The general officer commanding was on tour of the 32 artillery brigade Akure to boost morale of officers in the zone. In Nadoekiti, Kodla Adibabuji, Antinus. And Zinred in our Joss studio has the next set of reports for us on Nationwide. Hello. Zinret. Elizabeth, good, good evening and welcome to JOS. The JOS University Teaching Hospital has aligned itself with renewed calls to end the spread of COVID-19 as it commences the administration of the AstraZeneca vaccine on its staff. Felicia Dali of Somela has details. Chief Medical Director, Joss University Teaching Hospital, Professor Edmund Banwart, after receiving the vaccine, says the hospital management is in support of the European Medicine Agency and the federal government in the fight against the spread of COVID-19 pandemic. The advantages of taking this vaccine far outweighs any disadvantage. It is for your own good that you take this vaccine and prevent yourself if you get infected from developing illness and that will lead to death. By the time the general public, at least 70% get uh, are covered with the vaccination, we will create what is called herd immunity. The COVID vaccine um, is uh, safe, is effective, and uh, the essence of uh, introducing vaccination is to maximize uh, on the need for uh, controlling pandemics of various kinds. Those who received the first dose of the vaccine are expected to complete the second dose after six weeks. In Jos, Felicia Dalio of Samaila, NTA News. Operation Safe Haven, in its quest to read the Society of Criminal Arts, has paraded 23 suspects for various crimes in Jos and its environs. The report. The suspects paraded include 17 kidnappers, among which 11 are from Kaduna State, 4 from Bauchi, and 1 each from Kano and Plata States, who are accomplices in the attempted kidnap of one Alhaji Gamboya Wuro of Lishin Village in Basa local government area of Plata State. Others are 4 persons arrested for robbery along Haske Lamingo Road, 1 person arrested during a raid in the hideout of suspected Sarasuka members in Rikos and West of Mines, just North local government area, while one person was intercepted by joint troops of OPSH and NDLEA at Shandam local government area. We have interviewed them and we have completed investigations on their case and we have established prima facie case against them and we will soon arrange them before the law courts. Items recovered from the suspects include a Harrisburg pistol loaded with seven rounds of 9mm ammunition, seven motorcycles, two fabricated rifles, two live cartridges, 13 cutlasses, three daggers, 17 cell phones, assorted charms, one tricycle, a machete, a knife, and some substances suspected to be cannabis sativa. The Operation Safe Haven reassured the public of its determination to eliminate criminality protect the lives and property of law-abiding citizens. That's it from Joss. We'll go on a break now and Nationwide continues with Mina in Enugu. To drive home the reality of the virus and the current acceptance of the vaccine, the Enugu state government has launched a campaign against the COVID-19 with survivors of the virus in the lead. The government the heroes and heroines of the pandemic as ambassadors of the campaign. Susan Eze has details. 
going on in Nigeria. Yet, some citizens are still in doubt about the reality of the virus in the country. To dispel this doubt and convince residents on the need and safety of the vaccine, the Enugu State Government has adopted a strategy launching a campaign against COVID-19 with a team of survivors as the campaign ambassadors. This team of survivors tagged heroes and heroines are to champion the Get Vaccinated campaign across the state and as well promote the non-pharmaceutical measures against COVID. There will be uh, hospitals who will share their experiences with their friends, families and communities. Meanwhile, COVID-19 statistics in Enugu State as at 31st March 2021 stand at 2,237 confirmed cases. 1,923 treated and discharged, 285 active cases with 29 deaths. In Enugu, Susan Eze, NTA News. The Director General Industrial Training Fund, Mr. Joseph Ari, has commended the Enugu State Government for being an inspiration and support in the implementation of various skills acquisition programs for youths in the state. Mr. Ari gave the commendation during the graduation of 105 trainees of 2020 National Industrial Skill Development Program, NISDD. Kelechi Ochia reports that the agency distributed about startup parks to the beneficiaries. The National Industrial Skill Development Program, NISDP, is one of the numerous scale acquisition intervention programs that were introduced in 2016 to drive the achievement of the federal government's job and wealth creation policies. From the very first day they started teaching us, we started making money. We started producing and selling from the very first day they taught us. Presenting startup parks to the graduating trainees, Enugu State Governor, represented by his special advisor on human development and poverty reduction, Uche Obodo, urged the graduates to consider the equipment as their ticket to success. I also wish to call on other organizations with similar mandates like the ITF to come up with sustainable programs to empower Nigerian youth with resistance skills for self reliance leading to job creation and economic development. Representing the Director General ITL, Adeshola Taiwo noted that the program focuses on technical skill acquisition to create jobs that will curb the rising unemployment and breed a new generation of entrepreneurs to transform the economic landscape of the country. In Enugu State, the program has trained 1,505 citizens and empowered them with startup parts. High point of event was inspection of the exhibition stand in Enugu, Kelechi Ochiara, NTA News. And that's a bit from here. Nationwide continues with Elizabeth in Abuja. Thank you, Amina. Media practitioners and owners have been enjoined to eschew sensationalism in their publications and show the path of absolute professionalism. Executive Secretary Nigerian Press Council Francis Nwosu handed down the advice against the background of recent media reports that seek to heighten the state of affairs in the country. Anthony Forson reports. Recent media reports have continued to generate discourse, giving credence to doubt the credibility of such media platforms. It is in the light of this that the Executive Secretary of the Nigerian Press Council, Francis Mwosu, says there should be a high level of responsibility and patriotism. It's unfortunate. We have received several reports of ethnic profiling. Ethnic profiling of uh, uh, men killings or the, the IPOP against any section of the country, it is not in the interest of Nigeria. Whether in the print media or in the electronic media, private or government media, the ethics of that profession must uphold the unity 
and the visibility of Nigeria and the oneness of the Nigerian people. He wondered why sensationalism must be brought to bear in a noble profession which ought to be guided by ethics and not sensationalism given the state of affairs in the country, enumerating truth, accuracy, independence, fairness, and impartiality, as well as confidentiality, as the hallmark of the journalism profession in Abuja, Anthony Forson, NTA News. Let's join Asmao in Sokoto for more reports on Nationwide. Hello, Asmao. Elizabeth, good evening and welcome to Sokoto. Sokoto State Government has established a committee to work with the management of Usman Amfudu University, Sokoto, on matters affecting land and land administration in the university. Elhat Abdullahi has the reports. The then University of Sokoto, later renamed the Usman Amfudu University, was among the second generation universities established in 1975. The land mass of the university covers 5,630 hectares with 61 villages within the university land area. Presenting the report on the land matters of the university at a government house, Sakoto, the vice chancellor, Professor Laula Suleiman Bilbi, said it is time to resettle the villages to facilitate the development of the university. He noted that 1,029.72 hectares of land have been earmarked for the resettlement of the villages, including a proposed 2,500 housing units mega city development. There was an agreement between the university and the villagers that when development reaches their place, they were moved. Unfortunately, the development has not reached their place until now. While describing the matter as complex, Governor Amin you know, Temple said the government must work toward addressing the problem to check the discomfort and inconveniences posed to the university community. It's really very uh, unfortunate because had it been done, by then, possibly would have saved this situation. Announcing the composition of a committee under the leadership of the Tafari King Sakoto, Ibrahim Gedado, to work with the university management in that regard, Tambol extolled the wise decision of the previous administration in moving out all the communities from the land area earmarked before the commencement of the construction work of the Sakoto State University. In Sakoto, Alhat Abdullahi, NTA News. Nigerian youths have been challenged to always resolve their grievances through dialogue rather than confrontation. This was part of discussions that dominated a one day program on attitudinal orientation organized by the National Orientation Agency. Sheikh Mohammed Dati completes the report. The nationwide attitudinal reorientation focused on students and tertiary institutions with a view to keeping them abreast on the matter. Part of the objective of the program is to engage Nigerian youths in government policies, programs, and activities in the face of COVID-19 pandemic. It is also to reawaken the conscience of the youths on the need to embrace the national core values and ethics. We want the youth to key into government policies, programs, and activities so as to shun any uprising concerning government policies, programs, and activities. Despite the number of social investment programs by both state and federal governments, Nigerian youths still depend on government work. In the social uh, investment programs, you see, we have the empower. The government decided to have this program to assist the, particularly the graduates and the non-graduates, particularly in the in creative and in agro. Two papers were presented at the event on the impact of youth's participation and involvement in policy making and governance by Nura Abdullahi Atajiri while the second paper was on insecurity and the Nigerian youths presented by the DPO Marina Police Station. The national program is expected to cover all the 20 city local government areas of the state. In Sakwato, show Muhammad Detti, NTA News. And that's it from here. It's back to Elizabeth in Abuja for more news. Good evening. Thank you, Asmao. Now, talking sports, Vice President Yemi Oshimba just says the National Sports Festival is not only an avenue for athletes to display their sporting prowess, but a veritable tool for promoting the unity of Nigeria. The Vice President stated this while declaring open the 20th edition of the National Sports Festival, tagged Edo 2020 in Benin City. Elizabeth Omoho reports.
The much awaited 20th National Sports Festival, NSF, finally kicked off with an opening ceremony at the renovated Samak Bermuda Stadium, coming after one year of postponement due to a coronavirus pandemic and 27 months since the 19th National Sports Festival ended in Abuja. Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo, represented by the Minister of Sports, expressed President Mohamed Burari's determination in engaging youth productively. He wants both the public and private sectors to invest in sports. The reach of this festival, it engages our youth, and the National Sports Festival deserves a promised place in the priority of any government. An investment in both transport, training and training, and transporting of the structure is most desired. Governor Basaki emphasized on the need for peace, tolerance, and brotherhood. Our dear athletes, all of you have come from different parts of the country, and this game belongs to you. Please compete fairly in the games and show us all the products of the many hours you spend practicing to, the, to be the best in what you do. Already, 6,500 athletes are just them for 635 gold medals, 635 silver medals, and 885 bronze medals in 32 sports during the 12-day long events. In Benin, Elizabeth Omako, NT News. For more sporting stories, let's join Kenne Imag Budike. Nigeria's Super Eagles leaped four steps from 36th to 32nd in the world, according to latest FIFA rankings released on Wednesday instead of the traditional first Thursday of every month. Nigeria remained third in Africa behind Tunisia and Senegal, while Belgium, France, Brazil, England and Portugal occupy top five places in the world. The 2020-2021 season of the Nigeria Professional Football League has embarked on an eight mid-season break until the 18th of this month. The league management company says the second transfer window is on presently and will close at the midnight of April 14, imploring all the clubs to use the opportunity to strengthen their teams. When you have this kind of officiating, definite, definitely you will know the good coaches that are on ground and you will know the good players that are on ground. And now we start to see one of the players playing, you understand, for the Super Eagles. At the end of the first stanza, Quara United are on top of the standings with 36 points, while Adamawa United remain at the rock bottom with 12 points in 19 games. The need to discover, educate, empower and mentor Nigerian girls through impactful sporting activities and programs was re-echoed as the Association of Former Female Athletes of Nigeria, AFAN, joined the rest of the world to mark International Day of Sports for Development and Peace, which is observed every year on April 6. We know that sport is a unifying factor and any country that takes sport seriously will enjoy peace considerably. Because the essence of sports is to unite citizens together. Once the youth are occupied, definitely you minimize insecurity. This year's celebration centered on reaffirming the place of sports in the recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic, amongst others. With Sports Update, Kenan Ima Abudike, NTA News. In Sports Update, ends nationwide today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to connect with us at the NCA. Stand firmly against rape and rapists. Good evening.